At about 10 minutes into the video are some upsetting pictures of dead turtles that some of you may prefer not to see. Sea turtles have been around in our oceans for 100 million years, but many of the seven species are about to go extinct because of human activities. Sea turtles are of benefit to our oceans, helping to maintain the health of seagrass beds and coral reefs. This in turn benefits commercially valuable species such as shrimp, lobster and tuna. There are seven species of sea turtles living today. They are the green sea turtle, loggerhead, Kemp's Ridley, Olive Ridley, Hawksbill, Flatback and the Leatherback sea turtle. Sea turtles are found in all oceans except for the polar regions. The Flatback sea turtle is found exclusively on the northern coast of Australia and the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle is only found in the Gulf of Mexico and along the east coast of the United States. They are well adapted for a marine life, having a smooth and streamlined shell called a carapace, and muscular flippers which allow them to swim swiftly and effortlessly through the ocean. They have lungs, so need to come to the surface to breathe, but can stay asleep underwater for hours. Their diet depends on the species. Some eat a variety of plants and animals, while the hawksbill eats primarily sponges found on and around coral reefs. Leatherbacks feed exclusively on jellyfish and other soft-bodied invertebrates that float in the water column. Green sea turtles forage among seagrass beds and near shore habitats. The leatherback, hawksbill and Kemp's Ridley turtles are all critically endangered. This means they have an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. The green sea turtle and loggerhead turtles are endangered and this means they are seriously at risk of extinction. The olive Ridley turtles are vulnerable which means they are likely to become endangered. There is not sufficient data for the flatback turtle. So why is the existence of these beautiful creatures so threatened? Well, I thought I would start at the beginning of a turtle's life and discuss the threats to it at each stage. Life starts for a turtle when it hatches out of its egg and makes a mad dash for the sea. Eggs are laid by the mothers in the sand on various beaches around the world in the tropics and warm temperate regions. Females typically lay two to six clutches, each containing 65 to 180 eggs, at intervals of about two weeks. They will do this every one to nine years, depending on the population. Incubation generally lasts eight weeks. The sex of the turtle is determined by the temperature of the sand. This is called temperature-dependent sex determination. Research has shown that if a turtle's eggs are incubated below 27.7 degrees Celsius, the turtle hatchling will be male. If the eggs incubate above 31 degrees Celsius, the hatchling will be female. Temperatures that fluctuate between the two extremes will produce a mix of male and baby female turtles. The warmer the sand, the higher the ratio of female turtles. If incubation temperatures are above 35 degrees Celsius or below 25 degrees Celsius, the eggs die. As the Earth experiences climate change, increased temperatures could result in skewed and even lethal incubation conditions which would impact turtle species and other reptiles. Researchers have found this to be the case with a population of Pacific green sea turtles which inhabit the northern barrier reef. The researchers found that females originating from warmer northern nesting beaches were extremely female biased, with 99.1% of juvenile, 99.8% of sub-adult and 86.8% of adult-sized turtles being female. The scientists combined their results with temperature data which showed that, and I quote, the northern Great Barrier Reef green turtle rookeries have been producing primarily females for more than two decades, and that the complete feminisation of this population is possible in the near future. Turtles originating from the southern nesting beaches near Brisbane, where temperatures have not increased as significantly, show a moderate female sex bias of 65-69% to 69 females. Scientists predict that the male-female balance of all seven sea turtle species would be exceedingly vulnerable to climate change. Warmer temperatures would eventually lead to high egg mortality and entirely female offspring being produced. Entire populations may be wiped out. Nesting sites will also be affected by climate change. Sea level rise will decrease the availability of suitable nesting sites with up to half being lost and incubating clutches could be at risk if water tables rise, effectively flooding the nest from below. Due to climate change, there has been an increase in the proportion of extreme weather events, such as hurricanes or typhoons, which may cause significant erosion or damage to shorelines. Due to humans fortifying coastal regions to protect their roads and buildings from the effects of climate change, 
There is a reduction in the total amount of sandy beach available, particularly the upper intertidal beach area for turtles to use as nesting sites, and in some cases, entire beaches have been lost. Some beach stabilising technologies, such as seawalls and beach free nourishment, affects the nesting females by blocking access, disorientating turtles, or by making the sand inappropriate for nesting. A study of Florida's beaches, where 90% of the loggerhead turtles found in the western Atlantic Ocean use the beaches as nesting sites, have found that these sites suffer from erosion. Before these habitats were developed by humans, the effect of erosion on sea turtle nesting habitat was probably minimal. To mitigate this erosion, removed sand can be replaced by sand from behind the beach or substrate transported to the area from adjacent locations. This is called renourishment. A study into the effects of renourishment of beaches on turtle nesting has shown that the proportion of eggs that develop is not affected, but the female turtles don't like the new sand and place fewer nests within it. The females abandon nesting attempts and this was positively correlated to a greater surface hardness of the renourished beach. After renourishment, raised banks of sand are formed, called berms. These can prevent some females from crawling to preferred nesting sites. After two years, surface hardness decreased, berms were rarely present, and nesting attempts were more often successful. However, in subsequent years, nesting densities declined again as erosion narrowed the renourished beach. With increased tourism and a desire to live near the coast, light pollution has become a major problem for nesting females. Studies have shown that the higher the light pollution, the lower the nest density. If the female doesn't nest after multiple false crawls, she will nest on a less favourable beach or even deposit her eggs into the ocean. In built-up areas, the brightest light comes from inland and the hatchings head towards this, which can lead them to being run over, drown in swimming pools and dehydration. Once in the ocean, hatchings can still become disorientated and be lured back onto shore. This has been found to be more so on moonless nights. Although many eggs are laid and hatch, many hatchlings are killed due to predation by crabs, foxes and birds as they make their way from the nest to the sea. When they reach the shallow waters, many more small turtles are taken by fish. As if this is not enough to contend with, in many coastal communities in Central America and Asia, turtle eggs are taken by hunters to eat. Extensive turtle egg collection is thought to have been a significant factor in the decline of several marine turtle populations around the world including the leatherback's nesting population in Malaysia, and all of Sri Lanka's turtle nesting populations, where they are eaten as a cure for asthma. People are trying to prevent the taking of eggs, and there are many examples of successful solutions to this problem, which include education, patrolling nesting beaches, relocating eggs to hatcheries, ecotourism based on sea turtles, and government-imposed limits on consumption. The most success has been where a combination of these methods has been employed. An example of this was highlighted on David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2. In the last episode, he introduces a man called Lem Peters, who showed that one person really can make a difference. In a village near Trinidad, he started by patrolling the beach at night to protect the turtles, which had limited success. He went on to encourage tourists to visit the nesting turtles, with some trained locals as their guides. He also went into schools to educate the next generation. Eventually, some of the poachers became part of the conservation program and it is now thought to be one of the most densest leatherback nesting beaches in the world, with 500 turtles nesting a night compared to 40 per night 20 years ago. He is now the chairman of the Turtle Village Trust, whose mission statement is as follows. The Turtle Village Trust is a unique, non-profit, umbrella body that uses strategic partnerships to coordinate, facilitate and implement knowledge-based sea turtle conservation efforts in Trinidad and Tobago for the development and empowerment of coastal communities. There is at least some hope for these magnificent creatures. Once the hatchlings reach the ocean, they swim several miles offshore where they find currents, such as the Gulf Stream, that may carry them for years. The Gulf Stream also carries sargassum seaweed, which offers food and protection to the young turtles. There are many predators on these small turtles, such as sharks, big fish and birds. The obstacles are so numerous for the baby turtles that only about 1 in 1,000 survive to adulthood. They will float around in these currents for a few years, and this is known as their pelagic phase, and will not return to inshore waters until they are juveniles, which may take as long as 10 years. There is abundant food in the shallow coastal waters and they will forage over an enormous area, continuing to grow. Once they reach sexual maturity, 
which is different for different species and ranges from 10 to 50 years. They leave coastal areas and migrate thousands of miles to their breeding areas. To breed, turtles go back to the beach where they were born. They manage to find the beach using the Earth's magnetic field. Courtship and mating for most sea turtles is believed to occur during a limited receptive period. Afterwards, only females come ashore to nest. Males almost never return to land. During their time at sea, adult sea turtles have few natural predators, except for the occasional shark attack. It is humans, once again, that cause the most harm to these majestic creatures. Turtles are being caught illegally by fishermen across the world. The turtles are sold for their meat, or as in the case of hawksbill turtles, are caught for their scales on their shells, which are used to make tortoise shell. International trade in wild turtle products is banned by all the countries that have signed up to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, CITES, which includes the UK. This means it is illegal to bring any turtles or their products into the country. Despite these restrictions, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs in the UK continue to seize marine turtle shells, stuffed turtles, turtle shell jewellery, turtle oil, meat and eggs, as well as live hatchling loggerhead turtles from travellers entering the UK from a variety of countries. Turtles are also captured, injured or killed in many kinds of fishing nets by accident. It is estimated that the fishing industry contributes to the death of hundreds of thousands of sea turtles each year. The type of fishing nets that catch turtles are purseins, trawls, pots and traps, gill nets, dredges and long lines. There is also the problem of turtles being caught by abandoned fishing gear such as ghost nets and lines. The statistics are horrific. Wide mouthed trawl nets are known to catch all marine turtle species in coastal waters and may drown as many as 150,000 turtles each year. Long liners fishing for tuna, sharks and swordfish set more than 1.4 billion hooks each year and capture more than 20,000 loggerheads and 50,000 leatherbacks annually, with tens of thousands of turtles subsequently dying from their injuries. The final problem I am going to discuss is that of plastic pollution. I am sure we have all seen the pictures of turtles eating plastic bags that they have mistaken for jellyfish. Whilst this in itself is horrific, the problem is actually much more widespread. Research has found that although ingestion may occur as a result of indiscriminate feeding, plastic that physically resembles turtles' natural food is ingested at a higher rate than other types. The plastic ingested has a range of effects on the turtle, from just passing out of the turtle to lethal effects caused by the gut being damaged. Obstruction of the gut can result in malnutrition and eventually death. Globally, it is estimated that 52% of all sea turtles have ingested plastic debris, although this varies from region to region. In a worldwide survey carried out by Exeter University in 2017, covering the major oceans where turtles live, it was discovered that 91% of all entangled turtles were found dead. It is estimated that a thousand turtles die a year, and that this will be a gross underestimate, as not all entangled turtles will end up washed on shore. The turtles also suffered serious wounds from entanglement, leading to maiming, amputation or choking. Others that survived were forced to drag discarded rubbish or debris with them. The survey found that turtles are being tangled up in lost fishing nets, plastic twine and nylon fishing line, as well as six-pack rings from canned drinks. All species of turtle need our help and protection if they are going to avoid extinction. There are many organisations working to help our sea turtles, such as the World Wildlife Fund, who are, and I quote, working around the world to eliminate sea turtle bycatch from fisheries, reduce the unsustainable harvest and illegal trade in marine turtles, and stem the loss of critical sea turtle habitats. Check out their website for lots of information and the opportunity to adopt a sea turtle, an ideal Christmas present. Many organisations, such as the Turtle Village Trust and the Sea Turtles in Costa Rica, offer people the opportunity to help police nesting beaches, take part in surveys and possibly work with the hatchlings. Even if we are not lucky enough to be able to finance one of these types of experiences, we can all do our bit to reduce our carbon footprint and reduce our plastic waste. It would be incredibly sad if an animal which has been swimming in our seas for 100 million years were to become extinct due to the actions of us humans.